Where are you going? I'm going to throw this out. Oh, okay. So I want you to, you can probably do your scream while I'm, subscribe now! <laughs> Hey, if you want to see two guys eating in a car, yeah. subscribe At least it's entertaining. It is. Are you not entertained? Subscribe now! Are you not entertained? Make sure you hit that bell for more Bills news. Jesus, that sounds the same as the last one. Shaq Lawson. People, deja vu all over again. I know, again. right? Another Clemson player that we declined their fifth, like, fifth year option. You know that happens a lot with the Cle with Clemson defensive ends? Like, go back and look at Clemson <laughs> defensive ends. And Drew Gear from the Rock Power Report listed them in, in our chat that we have with him. And he listed them. And it's not a good list. Like you look at that list, you go, oh, yeah, I remember that. I remember that guy. Interesting thing, too. Thank you, Drew. Yeah. From the Rock Power Report. He had, right here. If you want to give him a follow on Twitter, please do that. It's only 17 out of the 32 teams picked up the fifth year option. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and you really, when you look at it, it's Shaq Lawson starts a waterfall of players that didn't get their option picked up. Mm hmm. Right? It's. You look at the top 10, there's only one player who didn't get their option picked up in the top 10. But Shaq Lawson, and again, we had this conversation before, not this organization's guy. He is an inherited problem. He is an in-law. You got him in the relationship, right? He is an in-law. You just named Shaq Lawson an in-law? That's Shaq Lawson is an in-law because he was there when you got there. He's the guy on the couch from Half Baked. Oh, he is a guy on the couch. <laughs> because he didn't wake up till this season. <laughs> so it's three years. He's played 35 of 48 games. So he missed almost a season. Right. So far. And that but that but again, that was the previous but, regime. But no no yeah, determining that I, that was okay. No, but I wanna I want you to tell like you drafted the guy, he already had he had to have surgery. Yeah. That's what you understand. But, um, again. None of these guys were here for that. I, I know, but what I want you to do from a technical standpoint, I want you to explain why they may have declined the fifth-year option and what the fifth-year option entails. Because oh, we yeah. talk about it all the time, mm -hmm. but bringing up why that's important, I think, is, a, is, is good. Yeah, so the fifth-year option uh, is that contract that you get, depending on where the guy was drafted, top 10 or 11 through 32 or 31 when the Patriots actually don't get a first round pick taken away from love them. always saying that. Well, right. I mean, it's happened enough. It's happened enough. <laughs> they haven't drafted in the 20s. I don't know how long. <laughs> so, um, that fifth year option allows you to retain a player similar to like a franchise tag. Right? Yes. Um, now, the only difference is that that franchise tag has to be exercised before the start of the fourth season. Right? So, it has to be exercised by really the first week of May. And that's the way the league has it all timed out. After the draft, it has to be exercised by the first week of May or sometime in the first week of May, usually, depending on the calendar, sometimes the second week. Anyway, so what that does is it gives the team an extra year on those first round players that no other, uh, no other round is allotted. Every draft pick is a four-year guaranteed contract. The first round is a four-year guaranteed contract with this option. So with that being said, that fifth year option can be dropped by the Bills at any time. Like even in the middle of the season, doesn't matter, they can drop it at any time. If they pick it up, they can drop it at any point. The only caveat is the fifth year option is guaranteed against injury. Okay, explain what that means. <clears throat> so that means like the Bills had it with Sammy Watkins when they declined Sammy's option. Okay. They declined him and traded him, so we didn't really get to see how this played out. Yes. But um, if you have a player with an injury history concern, you're likely going to drop the option because the option's guaranteed against injury. So let's say Shaq Lawson breaks his leg like Matt Milano in the last game of the season, misses four, he's going to miss training camp in the first two games of the season due to the injury. Well, he's on your roster, period, and that $10 million option, you can't drop anymore because it's guaranteed at against At the start injury. of his fifth year, you're saying? Right. Okay, you pick up the option at the end of his third year, he plays through his fourth, fourth year. year. He breaks his leg and 
the start of his fifth year with the right. fifth year option, he would he still time. get paid. Yeah, he if he would miss any time in his fifth year due to injury, okay, then All right. unfortunately, you can't drop him at that point. Right, his contract's guaranteed, and it's not well, like you could was, drop him. But you, you could, but you're, you're taking it all on the chin because yeah. there's no signing bonus. So it's ten million dollars against your cap, whether he's on your team or not, because that's how much Shaq Lawson would cost for one year is ten mil. Yeah, even though he was drafted, I think either nineteenth or twenty-first, one right. of those two, he falls at the latter end of the fifth-year option as far as it. Uh, if you drafted one through ten, it's your position. Right. One through ten. If you're drafted 11 through 32, it's the average of the three third to the 25th. Right. At Highest your players at the position, which tells you how expensive defensive ends are. When three through 25 is priced at 10 million dollars, that's that's a crazy number. Oh, it is. It is. And the uh, the the one the two no, the two players that it was it was Anthony Barr versus Shaq Thompson. Mm-hmm. Their fifth year options were like six million dollars apart. Right. That's why it's such a big and it was linebackers, not mm-hmm. defensive. Defensive ends right. usually make more. But the thing about it is if you want a recent history lesson of what the fifth year option entails, Calvin Benjamin. Yeah. The Bills yeah. picked you know, they had his option. Uh-huh. It was a one year it Well was, that's one it of was the reasons, guaranteed. That was one of the reasons they traded for him was because it was he had two years left on his deal. They could pick up his option. Yeah, they would ext- you know they get two years out of him. He only had one year left on his contract, but he still had the option, which Carolina had picked up. So you trade for that, and you're good to go. You got two years on the guy. Well, but the point about it was, he was already paid. Right. So the fact is, we should cut him. We should cut him. We should cut him. You're not gaining anything by cutting yeah. him. Right. And the fi- and finally, it just got to the point where the Bills were like, "Listen, it's not we've it's the majority of the season. We've already known what you're mm-hmm. capable of. We can't do this anymore." Right. But. It, it didn't make sense earlier in the season to cut him because he's already been paid that money. Right. It's does it, it's yeah it's, because it there's guaranteed. no signing bonus. There's no yep. nothing. It's a guaranteed salary. So that's it. The money's on the books. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's they cost what they cost at that point. But the fifth year option is an interesting exercise in um, in player development, right? Because you see guys who get drafted with injury in the first round. You know, we talk about it at the draft show. It's you know not a bad risk to take because you always have the fifth year option on them. Well, guys who get hurt early in their career, they don't often get the fifth year option picked up because teams are afraid that they're going to get hurt again and be stuck with, you know, stuck with this contract and a player who's injured again. Fifth year options are mainly, would you say, due to a player's development. So you well, see a lot of quarterback pe- people trade back into the first round for quarterbacks right. because. We want to have that fifth-year option in case we need another year to work with him. Mm-hmm. Plus, it does. It's not like you have to. You have to do that. You can exercise the fifth-year option mm-hmm. and then just renegotiate the guy's contract. Absolutely right. right. So yeah. So not, often, and Brian Lasell brought this up from Rock Sports Network. Often, it's a sign of good faith, right? Yeah. Like you just pick up the option, say, "Listen, let's we'll pick up your option. Let's talk about an extension." You don't have to keep the option. No. Nothing says you have to keep the option. You know, once you pick it up, unless he gets injured, then that's that's a different story. And but I think that gets scarier and scarier as you get into training camp, as these guys start working out. Because if he goes in there and tears a bicep or a pec, well, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, now now we got a problem, right? So the closer and closer you get to the season, the more urgency you have to have to try and get that contract extension signed. I think the Bills declining the option. Sure, could they franchise tag him? Yeah, they could still franchise tag him. Could they transition tag him? Well, the transition tag and his fifth-year option are about the same price, Mm -hmm. right? So, I mean, I suppose you could do that if you wanted to, but nobody's going to pay Shaq Shaq Lawson $10 million in one season. Ziggy Ansah was asking for that, and he's still looking for still looking for work. Well, uh, you know? Shaq's a lot younger than Ziggy. Well, I get that, but I mean, you still have the same injury concerns as with. Oh, Ziggy, I understand so that's that. The comparison. Does this send a message not only of? I mean, you talk about good faith. It's mm-hmm. not maybe not good faith, but this, does this send a message to from the Bills to Shaq saying, "Listen, we don't think you're worth ten million dollars right now. Mm-hmm. Right, prove it to us, and we'll pay you." That's exactly, that's exactly what it is. Okay. Yeah, All right. that's exactly because, what it is. Because he showed up last season knowing that he had to ball out to even get his to even be in the discussion to get his option picked up. Because Shaq, the, Shaq, before last season started, picking up Shaq, uh, Shaq Lawson's option was a joke. Like, dude, you're about picking up Shaq's option. And then he played last year. Like, oh, actually, Shaq, Shaq played pretty well. Like, we, we might want to consider this. But mm-hmm. you look at the motivation of the player. And you look at the arc of who he is. And you look at, you know, is he just showing up to get paid? Well, then you better keep him on one-year deals so he always wants to get paid. 
Well, he was you know? drafted into a 3-4, so you don't oh, really yeah. know the, the full scope of how... Like you said, last year he did show up, and he did ball out, and he did right. pretty well. Um, but as far as when we talked about before of defensive ends in a Sean McDermott slash Leslie Frazier right. system, they're not going to get... They're not going to garner a lot of sacks. They're not gonna the, the money that they're going to have to get for their production, even though they're going to produce, they're not... They're not they're not. They're not like Jadavion Clowney at defensive ends. They're right. not like uh, like high guys or you know all these defensive ends that end up having like 15, 16, 17 sacks. Right. They're not those guys. Right. Um, they're very productive edge, setting the edge, um, doing all the little things you need to do as far as the defensive end position goes. But they're not worth ten million dollars. Right. Yeah. If you're going to spend money, Sean McDermott. In his defenses before, often didn't spend money on the edges, with exception of Julius Peppers. I mean, I guess you could say Jerry Hughes is the Bills' Julius Peppers, but they even let Julius Peppers walk, you know, like and come back. And, well, and later come back. You're <laughs> right, he was but forty. <laughs> but I mean, the price the price for Julius Peppers got insane, and it just wasn't worth it anymore. Yeah. So I mean, maybe, he was a freak, though. I mean, the but, guy was the Iron oh, Man of defensive ends. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, the guy never missed a start. Yeah, you you pay him though. I mean, yeah. that's why you that's why you do that for right. him because. The guy doesn't get hurt. Right. But does it say something like, we talk about the Bills in the cornerbacks, right, where a lot of the cornerbacks are interchangeable except for Trey White, right? Yeah. So are, is the Bills' defensive front, now you've spent, you, you've put a lot of assets in the middle, right? You got Harrison Phillips, third-round pick. You got Starla Tula, who's got the biggest contract on the team. You just invested the ninth overall pick on a defensive tackle. Jerry Hughes is one of your top three cap hits. You know, again, inherited, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But well, McCoy was inherited too, but you're not getting rid of initially when right. you had him because he's right. still a premier back. Right. However, what I'm the point I'm trying to get to is: Do the Bills need a premier defensive end? Do they need one? I mean, McDermott's had one, so you can't say that he didn't. They they had a premier defensive end. That's the, the shift I think you talk about from McDermott to Frazier, though. Maybe mm -hmm. Frazier wants one. Mm -hmm. And that's why in camp last year he was so upset with Hughes, saying it's all about you, Jerry. Mm -hmm. Maybe Frazier was pushing for Hughes and these big dog defensive ends. Mm -hmm. He's like, listen, I need this for my de defense. Yeah, you need to show and up. And Sean's like, well, no, no, I don't. I never had these guys, mm -hmm. and I still was productive with my defensive ends. Mm -hmm. He goes, no, no, I need these dogs. And then when Hughes was acting a fool in practice, that's when Frazier really got on him. Mm -hmm. It's all about you, Jerry. I put my neck out for you, and you're sitting here doing this to me. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. It could be. I don't know. I'm just I'm just spitballing here, but it seems like that's that's where the difference of philosophy comes in. But Sha Shaq's option not getting picked up isn't. It's surprised. It surprised me because you lose nothing by picking it up, right? Mm -hmm. You could pick it up and then in three weeks drop it before minicamp. But then you have to look at does that what does that do to relationship management, right? If you are trying to negotiate an extension. He's got injury concerns. You're on a timetable and you're a little concerned about the timetable. If you want to try and drop that option before he puts himself in a position to really get hurt, are you helping by picking up the option? You're not really at that point, right? You're you know, not really helping. I was always a proponent of you pick it up anyway because it doesn't hurt you. Right. But what if you pick it up and then negotiations don't go well because you're, he's probably saying, well, why are you renegotiating to pay me eight mil a year? When I already pay have me 10. ten, I've already got ten in the bank. I'll pay one, and then I'll play one year for you, and I'm done. I'll, yeah. go, I'll go somewhere else. Right. That's where it can go sour. Right, because negotiations. That you're right by picking up that option, it sets the starting point. Right. Yeah. You're, he's not going to sign. Um, he's not going to sign a four for twenty five deal. No. When he's got one for ten right now. That's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's it's just not going to happen. You're absolutely right. So I mean, there are. There's a little strategery at play. <laughs> There's a little strategery at play by declining the option because, again, you have concerns about him from an injury standpoint. You, I mean, you still hold leverage by declining the option because you could always franchise tag him if you had to. You could always transition tag him, although you really get nothing for that and you end up paying him the $10 million anyway. Um, With the rate at which edge rushers come out, though. Right. Why would you transit? No one will sign him. Right. It's, he's not your guy. And the Bills have shown that they want their guys. Uh-huh. Like, they cleaned house. Could they he cleaned... Could he completely do something different? Could he completely turn... A, 
But they play such a ro dif uh, rotational defensive front. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I don't see him as making more than – like even if he does really, really well this year, mm -hmm. seven and a half a year maybe, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. You're four yeah. for 30. You feel like coming back four for 30? Four for the 30s. Generous. I understand that. That's... However, if he's that guy and you don't think Murphy's that guy – and you're going to be out two defensive ends next year anyway. Right. Why not? Well, yeah, because you don't know about Hughes. No. You know, it's, you're going to get one or the other, in my opinion. You're going to sign Hughes to a two-year or three-year extension, or you're going to try and get Lawson back. And that's, that's, going, to be, that's going to be what happens. They're, mm -hmm. going to get, they're going to try and get one of them back. And is it possible that they completely misplay their hand and both guys leave? Oh, 100%. Yeah, absolutely, it's a possibility. Yeah. They can completely misplay their hand. But the fact still remains that Jack Lawson isn't one of their guys. Jerry Hughes isn't one of their guys. Hughes performs. It is like Hughes. Huh. Hughes performs. A lot of people were down on him, but he performed phenomenally last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, his PFF grades. You know how I love those. But, but they, they hold good. some. They do hold some value for defensive ends. Mm -hmm. They really do. They hold value for defensive ends. So I can't really knock PFF for what they grade defensive ends at. So I. If you're of the proponent that the Bills had the second best pass defense in the NFL last year and you don't think it was because of Jerry Hughes you're out of your mind. The one thing about Jerry that does drive me nuts is he he's going for the fumble at all times. So he'll swap that quarterback going for the ball. He'll overrun the QB. And I'm go fine with him ball. doing that this year. You are okay with it? I'm fine. You well, can't Oliver yeah, and those okay. maniacs. That's true. <laughs> It just bothers me to see a man that size swipe with his right arm and then Superman, you know, trying to get... <laughs> a man moving that fast at that size clearing the corner. I understand. That's going to be Montez you. Sweat. <laughs> Montez. Breaking his leg on FedEx Field. <laughs> what are they doing in Washington? What a joke show. I don't know what they're what doing in Washington. What a joke show. I tend to avoid Washington. Oh, my gosh. Let's draft a bunch of... Got a bunch of speed guys to play on this fresh sod we just laid down. <laughs> it's the field from the longest yard when they soaked it. <laughs> oh, man. Soccer sucks. <laughs> it's a soccer field. Let's just call it what it is. Soccer field. Soccer I think, sucks. I think I'm going to pass out. Shaq Lawson getting his option declined. Again, I, I get it, right? Because you're right. Why even bother putting one for ten on the table? No. If you have no interest in paying him $10 million. If you have an interest in paying him six, decline the option. If you have an interest in paying him eight, eight and a half. I think the argument comes in that you're not going to have him at all if right. you don't pick up an option. Well, it's a good faith gesture. Well, are you going to have a good faith gesture in renegotiations or no? Right. Because you're already getting 10. My client already has 10. Right. Why would he do it? Why would he do four for 24? Doesn't make any sense. Right, but I, again, like if your if your interest is paying him eight and a half a year, like you can get you can get by renegotiate. You pick up the option, you renegotiate. Eight and a half is pretty close to ten, just as long as the signing bonus money is there. His man, that man gets his ten million dollars next year, plus some, right? Like that's that's the deal. If you're gonna sign an extension, let's say they did offer him four for twenty four, you better be prepared to put seven million dollars in signing bonus money, so that way he gets his ten this year. You know, or ten next year, rather. I would, uh, I would, I would couch it in the roster bonuses. I would too. Yeah. I wouldn't want to. I would yeah. put three a year in roster bonuses. Yeah, but that doesn't That's entice. The, that doesn't entice the player because roster bonuses. Hey, just you, encourage you to get cut. You play three quarters of your. You play three quarters of the games that we've had you. And half the snaps. And half the snaps. <laughs> right. So we you know what we're gonna do. We're gonna put three quarters of your bonus on the roster. <laughs>